Stu here with a guide on Biggin. We're going to take him in a lot of fun places. We're going to take him to Nightmare Campaign, and he's going to solo farm 12-6. Or at least we're going to try because he has a really high percentage to complete it in like 40-something seconds. So we will see. Here is my Biggin. He's geared fairly well. I don't have any fancy Savage gear on him or critical damage gear. But as you can see when we're going through this, 23% critical damage. Very nice. We have other things in here that are increasing his damage quite a bit. And we have attack on this, critical damage here, and accuracy there. Now this critical damage glove, I had attack percentage gloves on him, and I took him through, I, I filmed it, and farmed 12-3 Brutal many times with both of them on. I couldn't tell the difference in damage. This has more speed, so I, I, I went with this one because it has more speed. But as far as 60% attack compared to the 80% critical damage for gloves, I really could not tell a difference with him. We'll look at his total stats in just a minute. Let's go over to his skills. Head splitter attacks one enemy, and then if you critical hit, you will attack all enemies, which actually attacks them all for full damage. It's not a low hitting AOE attack. It's pretty good. It hits, it hits pretty hard. And then this one, his forward charge does not hit hard. It doesn't really hit hard at all, but it does have a 50% chance to apply the stun, and then we can also apply decrease accuracy debuff. All his damage is based off of attack. And then we have this molt, Molten Slag, which attacks all enemies two times, decreases their turn meter, and, and then can place the decreased speed debuff on them for two turns. Very good ability. This one actually does hit hard, and it does a lot of cool stuff, like decreasing the turn meter and putting slow speed. Very good for pretty much anything in the game except for the, the, the dragon. We cannot slow his speed or decrease the dragon's turn meter. So very good. And his aura is 90% accuracy in all dungeons. So that is him. We also have Masteries to go with additional damage. We've got Flawless Execution to try to reset a skill if we can. And then we can increase the duration of his slow speed and his decreased accuracy. Then we've got Evil Eye to drop the turn meter a little bit on his AoE. And then, you know, crit, crit damage, all the rest of this. Let's look at his total stats to see what we're actually working with here. So we've got 4,366. Now, when I had the 60% additional crit, uh, additional attack gloves on him, that was around 5,200, 5,100 something what I had total, but then of course I had less critical damage. And again, I couldn't really tell the difference. We do have a lot of speed on him. We've got 100% crit, always good to have 259 critical damage, 251 accuracy, which we're gonna need of course, but not a lot of defense, HP is fine, but his defense is pretty low. So if he gets hit, he does, he does get hurt. So let's go over here and try the nightmare. Let's go try the campaign first and see if I can do, see if I do an epic fail here or not. We're gonna go ahead and put him down here. Now, 12-6 is much easier than 12-3 for the, for the, the, against the, these guys that I faced. Much easier. We're going to go ahead and put in, who do we have to farm with? Oh, one stars? Sure, let's go with a one star. All right, let's start this up. Please, please give me luck today because it's about a, I don't know, what is the percentage for me to pass this? Lately, it's been a good 60%. I, I pass it more than I fail if I try it. Now, I don't farm here. I still farm in 12-3 Brutal with either him or shield guard does the same exact time in 12-3 brutal but this girl over here on the side allure if she does her skill three she can nuke a lot of people with it but sometimes she was stunned there but sometimes she doesn't here she is again and she's there often so if she does that skill it can really hurt but my my guy is so fast now look look at this he is killing it plus i usually do this on blue stack so it's slower 31 second farm nightmare campaign right here with Biggin. You saw it first, world first, live. Nobody else has done this. Nobody else can do this world first. You saw it right here. So Biggin's pretty good for this. I'm gonna do it one more time just to see if it was a fluke because it was so fast. Let's see Let's see if we can do it again. I mean, I think you definitely have to have the speed no matter what you bring in here to farm. You can do it with Martyr. You can do it with Terrell. You can do it with anybody that's defense-based. Obviously, you can do it with Biggin because he's AOE all the time, right? And attack heavy, does stuns, slow speed, turn meter manipulation so he's got a lot of things going for him to make it easier for him in this but anybody can get nuked by that allure right there she's still alive and she's going to take a turn i'm not going to get a chance boom that's it see so she hit me for 30k so maybe i just need to get a little bit more a little bit more hp and we'll be good to go so i don't know we'll see but he did fairly well. He did fairly well. I can do it with my miscreated monster. If you didn't see my guide recently on doing Nightmare Campaign, I can do it with him every time, two minutes or under. There's a lot of other people that can do it. But we're all about Biggin. Let's get back into Biggin. So let's go into, just for fun, let's go into, he's great in Faction Wars, of course. Let's go into Arena real quick and just see what we can face. Just for fun, we'll take out Lord Shazar, put in her and him, and hopefully, I don't know, we're probably going to get, 
we might get beat up because we're taking out we're taking out my comp but for fun i hope we actually can do something no no this one this one this, no no oh, i wasn't there in time this is why you don't auto okay we're fine what am i gonna hit him with if i leave it on auto i feel like he's gonna do a skill two where he's gonna aoe and has a chance to stun which isn't that bad but i'd rather aoe decrease turn meter and put the slow on them because they're all they're all provoked right now so we're gonna do that and just kill somebody <laughs> we're just gonna kill i didn't even look at the damage we're just gonna kill people flat out so that is pretty fun actually usually I have lord shazar in here he has a two percent higher speed lead for the lead than arbiter and then he can apply the bombs which which hit really hard but this is actually really fun this is my first time i brought him in here and then he does the forward charge we try to get a stun there we didn't get it so we're good to go so big and basically let me sum up big he's a fun champion a really fun champion you always want to have diversity you want single target you want aoe is he is he is he 100 necessary for your spiders or dragons where am i at spiders or dragons or whatever else team at in game if you have a robust a robust roster right if you have a lot a lot of champions not really necessarily he's fun he's a lot of fun he can do a lot of damage he's not bad at all he's definitely definitely a top tier legendary he's up there right but do i need him in my drag in my spiders 20 team do i need him in my dragons 20 or ice columns 20 not really i can do a speed farm with other champions much easier but you know everybody's roster is different so you might have a big in you might have you might have received him recently and he's really good for you. Trust me, he's a really top tier legendary. So don't feel bad about booking him out. He does take quite a few books. You actually don't need to book him because he only needed books for percentage on a skill two. He still has a three turn cooldown no matter what on a skill two. But a skill three, it, it helps that to lower it. But again, it's not 100% necessary. You could, you could skill him up. You don't need to book him and still have a really good time and be really strong with him. That's not an issue at all. So he, he's good. I mean, he's doing work, right? In spiders, he drops a turn meter. He puts a slow. You can see the slow on the spider balls. Hopefully that was from him and not from Royal Guard skill three. But I mean, he, he has a lot going for him in spiders, but he can't. I mean, spiders are so strong. He can't just turn after turn AOE nuke these guys down. He's not that strong. No, nobody is really that strong, but he can put a dent in them and do really good damage. If they had a, a permanent perpetual decrease defense down on all the spiderlings when they came out, then yeah, he could really wreck these guys. But he does well. He does well. He doesn't do bad at all. As you can see, I normally wouldn't put him in here, of course, for a speed run, for an auto speed clear of under one minute, which I can do, you know, 40 seconds or whatever. I wouldn't have him in here in the team. He's going to slow it down because he doesn't have an ability to hit off, a max, off of max HP like these other people do. And I don't even know if we're going to complete it now. It's all on our Royal Guard. Takedown. Are you going to do takedown right now? You better do it. Is it enough? Okay, whew, barely. So we did it. We did it with Biggin in there. Good job. Let's go into one more thing. Let's go into Ice Golem so we can see how he functions in Ice Golems. And Dragons, he 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 kills the waves, right? He kills the waves with whatever I bring him in there. He will kill the waves in Dragons. And then when he gets to the Dragon, he'll do, you know, regular, kind of regular damage. A little bit higher than normal people would do damage, normal champions. But not crazy amount because then again, when I get to the dragon, I want Royal Guard to step in cold, cold Heart if I use her or Poisons from Bad L or something like that to take out the dragon much easier than, than Biggin. But for clearing waves, yeah, he's going to help you get there for sure. He's going to control those waves, take them out strong. You get a Zargala in there or a Tyrell to de decrease the defense and you're good to go. And this one, he's really good because on the wave two, you know he's handling it right he, he's stunning them and then he'll come in with his slag hit and decrease their attack and their speed their their turn meter and their and their speed and then do m massive damage where he killed himself are you kidding me okay well he didn't kill himself before <laughs> but that's what happens if you do massive damage like this you're killing my boys are killing themselves on the reflect there you go thank you Sirius. finally you remove the the buffs and and drop the the debuffs on them so it here though at this point for ice golem he will always do an AOE, right? Because if he hits one person and does a crit, he will AOE everybody else. Since he AOEs, I hope they fix his AI to always AOE with a skill two and skill three when it's up. Because right now, he won't do it. He'll only do his skill one over and over, which is still hitting everybody because he's got 100% crit. He should do his skill two because it has a chance to stun the side minions and put decreased accuracy, which even decreased accuracy on all these guys would be good, right? There's nothing wrong with having that up. And then also, he would do his skill three, which is going to drop the turn meter of all three of them and put a slow speed up. So there's a slow speed up right now. I think that's that's got to be from Royal Guard doing his A3, that's just random hit. 
So it's good for it's good for Biggin to do that. The only downside is, of course, when you have Biggin in here, he can drop the boss with all these AOEs down below those thresholds, and then the boss can hit you with 100% ignore defense if both his champions are up, 100% chance to to you know freeze you. So it's 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 hit or miss. It's risky. It's risky. It depends on your team. If you come in here, if I come in here with Bad L, and I come in here with a lot stronger champions, and if I lose somebody here at this fight, he's going to help me for sure. He's going to help me get through the waves. He usually helps out a lot better than he did in wave two where he died. He's going to help me get through the waves. And then here, if he dies and I have a really strong team, it can actually make the runs faster. When you have a few people die here that aren't the key people to do damage on this boss, and you're just down to like your last three, but they're the really, you know, they're the bad L, Kaimar, whoever else you have in here, putting up the poisons on everybody, it can actually make the run faster. So if he were to die here, that's fine because he's going to, <laughs> then that's okay. But it's not okay the way we're looking right now. Everybody is way too low. There we go. Okay, Arbiter Clutch. Best legendary in the game has got to be Ar Arbiter. She is. She's the most used, best legendary, most versatile legendary. You can say Bad L is good, and if you got Bad L, you would use him a lot. You would still use Arbiter more. You would use her in more situations and in more places in the whole entire game because Arbiter is just phenomenal. We should do a video on just how good Arbiter really is. But we'll do that later on. Okay, right now we're looking at how good Biggin is. So this is Biggin. I mean, let me know your thoughts. Do you are you having fun with him? Obviously, in Faction Wars, he's he's a beast. Everywhere else, I mean, we just saw him in Arena. I'm gonna have to play him more in Arena. I really am. I'm gonna have to try him out more there. Have some fun with him. See what I can do. See how he works out. But thank you all so so much for watching. That is Biggin. I don't know what else to say about him. He's a big dude, right? <laughs> there he is. Here are his final stats again what I have going for him. He can, again, you just saw that he can farm the Nightmare Campaign. I think I need to get his, his either his damage a little higher so we can make sure that Allure doesn't survive or his HP a little bit higher so we can survive it because it does ignore like 50% of defense or defense and does a decent amount of damage that we couldn't take. But I'll just try to get his damage up, right? I'll just try to, we'll come in here and get some Savage gear, get some gear that do additional critical damage gear, you know, change these out, these mix and match sets that I have, try to get some more damage. Actually, we can get a six star attack on him to pump up his attack a little bit more, but this does have a lot of HP. I mean, this is a, this is a pretty, this is a pretty good ring, but we'll see what we can do in further videos. Thank you all. Let me know your comments below and I'll see you all soon.